Welcome back to this tutorial where we'll um, create another box and then um, use a boolean operation to subtract it from the box that we've just created. Right, we're going to do something similar um, and there's many different ways of doing these types of processes in Grasshopper. So this is just one way of doing it. So um, We'll copy this um, but this time we don't want it at zero 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 so we can maybe if we copy these we can actually drive um, have some adjustability in where this point ends up being so we can drag all these so you can see already that the point is uh, moved into the center of the box that we've just created and we can even put it up into that center and we can do something uh, similar here um, uh, rather than create a plane we'll create another um, primitive and then there's box with two points so we can um, use that to uh, create a box in a different way and you can see we will need some more sliders to control that so we can just copy those bring those down And if we copy that, or do that as well, I should have copied that previously. But so if we bring those across, we can adjust this now. And then if we put those two together, you can see we have another cube. Uh, or another box. So that's just a, another way of creating a, a box. Um, it is also a good idea to, to keep track of everything that you're doing because it becomes easy to lose, um, it becomes easy to get confused of what you've created, especially once you create bigger scripts. So we can select a whole area and then we can go command G or control G um, and then group that so we know that that is, is uh, that first box so we can see it there and then we can also do that to this one but it's useful to be able to identify what's in these boxes so we can double click in the canvas and then use the tilled symbol which is um, above the comma next to the one where you'll need shift to get to um, and then we can type in uh, some text so it could be box, ooh, box, ooh, box two and then that just gives us some text that we can have uh, that we can select and group those we can view those in different ways so if we right click we can change the color so we might want to change that to a blue we can also do a blobbed outline so you can see a different sort of effect that that has so we have these two and we can still move pieces around um, within that We also can have the ability to change these sliders. So if we double click on that, we can give it a name. So we can say box to X uh, start. 
so you can get a sense I'm not going to do that for all of them but you can get a sense that that gives us a way of identifying what we're doing with each box so we can cont fully control that within what we're doing So that just works within the constraints that we have set up and it becomes quite useful if we just zoom extents or if we click on that one zoom extents we can see what's going on in the other views sometimes it can be a little bit tricky now we want to uh, see what ways we can to put a boolean operation onto those so if we go up to intersect there's a range here so we can create a union we can create a solid difference um, so we're going to start with that one so click and bring that in and this is quite easy so we just uh, bring that extrusion in to there and this one into here we get this funny thing happen uh, because it's created another object over top of the one that we just created. The way these components work, um, there's sort of three bits to it. So there's the name at the end here, so in this case box, a little icon, and then the inputs. So if we right click on the little icon, we can turn that off or we can turn it on. So it's a way of controlling the visibility of those. We also have some um, abilities to keep controlling this. So we can come back here and adjust this further. So we might want to keep modifying this So here you can see we've cut a slice out of this piece. So once we've sort of got a result, we can do what's called bake. So we can just hit bake. And we can set it to a different layer if we want. I'm not going to now, I'm just going to go yes. And it's created some geometry here so we can see previously we couldn't actually select any of those grasshopper components in Rhino but now we can and I can just move this out of the way so if we bring that up we can see it there at the moment this is just set in wireframe so if we right click on perspective and go to let's go um, Arctic see what happens there. So we now have this box that we've just created. We can also change that and if we go to pen, we've got that laid out. So we can see the outside of that pro model that we've just created. We can come back to Grasshopper. We can modify all of these so we can let's make that a bit bigger depending on what we want to do let's keep it there So we can then, we've created a new box, so we can bake that out. Let's leave it on the same layer. Come over to here, click on that. If you can't see this called Gumball, there's a little option here to turn it on and off. So that turns that Gumball on and off. So we can just drag that over and place it over there. 
So now we've got another one. So you can see how quick it is to generate different uh, options. We can also add some other elements into this. So here's this box. At the moment it's just working uh, in an orthogonal sense. We can uh, rotate this. So if we ro type in rotate, uh, we'll just keep it simple. So just rotate around one. So if we add the geometry in, the way Grasshopper works is it makes copies of the geometry as we do it. So here you can see that was the original one and here's the new one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it off. But we've got this one here where we can add an angle in. So if we type 360 into there, so now we have this slider that we can move or rotate around. It's a bit finicky, so we can also double click on that part of the slider and type in, so if we go 22, so you can see it's now, well that's a bit too far, What's happened there? There, 32. I'm not too sure what's going on there. But you get the idea. I think we may need to change the rounding on this. Um, so these have different number qualities. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll just bring this down. And then we can take that geometry and put it into there. So um, now we've, and we can bake that. Okay. And we can select, select that piece. I'll move that over there. So it gives you a quick insight into how we can modify these elements uh, with Grasshopper. So hopefully that gives you a very basic understanding of some of the benefits of using Grasshopper to, to create models.